Hello, my soccer universe. I'm wearing my Italy away jersey since Italy was wearing an away jersey in creating a historic result that we'll talk about in a sec. Uh, first off, I know that today I will not get to edit this video and probably it will uh, have some busy days ahead. So I'm again putting it together. It might be any way that I have to reduce the number of videos I'm making because honestly it's getting a little bit too frantic for me and uh, I have fun doing this but um, should not take over too much of my life. So I might uh, honestly only reduce, reduce the number of videos still having good content in there. So let's see how it goes. Um, I did not watch Italy yesterday because I mean the only game that was really to watch there was uh, Denmark at Ireland. Uh, that was basically a final with Ireland needing a win, Denmark with a draw, uh, right? Same uh, At the same time, Switzerland needed to win in Gibraltar to secure their spot and kind of the final decided those two, two places. Well, um, I had both games on and I, I said to myself, well, um, if Switzerland scores two at the half, I will switch over to a more interesting game. Uh, Switzerland only scored one through Eton again. And in Dublin, it was kind of a nervy game. You could see that Denmark maybe has the better players, uh, but uh, they couldn't get it onto the field. And Ireland, the longer the game went, Ireland had a little bit more of the game. But I think the only really exciting chance came shortly before the halftime. Completely, everything completely changed in the in the second half. Uh, first, first of all, Switzerland find found the goals, uh, finally. I mean, they wasted some chances, but Gibraltar was hanging on. It's very often with those games against Minus that uh, late you get the goals. Uh, Vargas in the 50th, Fasa in the 57th, uh, made it 3-0, then uh, Stalky puts one back, but immediately after uh, Benito uh, makes it 4-1, and then Itten and Shaka and then makes a 6-1 win. So, all eyes on Dublin. And Ireland really came out storming. Uh, would have had a big chance, uh, but you know, near where people miss, but um, it they never could find the final touch in a way, they never could get someone in position, they were dominated, right? And then a nice cross in from on the Danish side in the 75th minute, and Martin Breathway with the first shot on the Danish goal makes it 1 0 for Denmark, so door to the Euros wide open for Denmark. Um, 10 minutes later, Ireland now really pressing, they needed two goals, um, and it is Doherty who finally puts the ball into the net uh, in the 85th, and then it was really game on, because up until that point you kind of had the feeling that the Irish were a little bit not believing in their chances, but there they started believing, and yeah, uh, they just couldn't find the goal anymore, I just found it a little bit, little bit unfair that uh, Kaspar Schmeichel was a little bit wasting time, and the ref we gave a free kick and then saw that the four minutes were exactly over and killed the game right there. I think I would have given the free kick to the, uh, to Ireland. Yes, I was a little bit more in the Irish camp because, you know, they are the underdog, so I was uh, in favor of the outsider. Let's put it that way. But nothing against Denmark. Congratulations, Denmark. Congratulations, Switzerland. Switzerland finishes now first in the group as kind of predicted and Denmark is in second place. Also, I'm not that unhappy that Denmark is in second place because that makes the draw a little bit more uh, streamlined. It is complicated enough as it as it stands, and I'm not going to do now a prediction right thereafter because I even the playoffs there will be a draw. UEFA makes it really really complicated, <laughs> to be honest. Um, in um, in group. G, F, Group F, I always get this one. Sweden beats the Ferry Islands 3 0, goals by Anderson in the 29th, uh, Swanberg in the 72nd, and Guidetti in the 80th make that one. Spain against Romania was utter destruction. That was, uh, was one of my target games to flip over to Switzerland. Uh, would have scored more, but those games they went out of uh, hand very quickly. Fabian Ruiz went up in the 8th. Uh, then uh, Romania had a chance and probably had a claim for a penalty, but then it was quickly put to bed because Gerard Marino scores two in the 33rd and the 43rd. Uh, on goal in the 45th, the Rouge makes it 4 0 at the half. Spain then very late, Oyar Sabal adds a fifth, so kind of taking it easy. Um, and um, Norway beats Malta 
2-1 away from home. Uh, Kenyon Sorloth uh, once for Norway, it was 1-1 one, one at the half, and Fennec makes it 1-1. Uh, one, one. The game of the evening, though, maybe not for... If you just take the result, was Italy's destruction of Armenia. 9-1. Unbelievable. Uh, I think the highest win in Italy's history was 9-0 uh, way back, I think sh shortly after, after the war. 9-1. That was never in the cards and that shows how this Italy team is actually probably quite exciting. Uh, also seven different goal scorers. We had Immobile who gets two and Sagnolo who gets two. Uh, both scoring the eighth and the ninth minute in the 29th. Barella, then again Immobile, and then again Zaniolo. Romagnol in the 72nd makes uh, at, um, at, I think, the seventh. Uh, now there's the sixth. Jorginho from a penalty. Hoppity hop, as always. Orsolini in the 77th. Then nice consolation goal for Babaya in the 79th. But Chiesa, two minutes later, makes it nine. Italy should have come maybe for 10, have the highest win in the, his history, so we can talk even more. But Italy finishes at perfect qualification and gives themselves even a small shot of becoming the top 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 seed. If Belgium wins by 2-0 they will be the top seed against Cyprus today and I would expect some something like that but you know Italy is underlining their strength. I am just afraid that at the, the Euros will come a little bit too soon. Bosnia gets a positive result 3-0 against Liechtenstein and Greece is on the up. They have three wins in a row and they beat Finland, uh, being 1-0 down from a stupid defensive error um, at the half. And then they turned around, Mantalos and Janopoulos to uh, make it. And this is a team without the big stars, because Van Schiep is not called Kalkokoga. Seemingly, uh, things are working again, and maybe things are looking up for Greece. I would hope so. Well, as I said, uh, the group finishes with Italy on top, uh, Finland is second, and Greece with this finishes in third, which is probably, uh, you know, if they could have gotten it together, Greece could have made a uh, push. Fortunately, Greece is one of those teams that will not be able to make it into the playoffs. But we look at this, uh, as I said, I'll pack this together, so let's see what happened on the last day of Euro qualifying. So, Euro qualifying 2020. 2019 is uh, in the books and yeah um, the day yesterday ended without any major surprises except one which didn't really matter uh, all eyes of course were on Wales against Hungary I hope so because that was the only game that was worth watching but I have to say when I uh, chose my games to watch yesterday I mean Wales Hungary was the main game and the zone decided to not have it with German commentators, which I thought was a little bit odd, because yesterday at least the Ireland-Denmark game, that was with German commentator. Not that I mind. Don't get me wrong, I actually do not mind. Um, I decided, yeah, let's watch Austria as well, because I was hoping that uh, two last players and a former last player uh, will make their debut. They did, but more on that later. And yeah, I then said, okay, what's the best other game? Germany-Northern Ireland. Given how Northern Ireland battled against the Dutch, let's watch that one. Quick, yeah, uh, let's go in Group C. Let's go group by group because uh, we all know the, uh, how it goes since since, since we're there already. Yeah, I, it actually was at the beginning the right choice uh, to go for Group C. Uh, the Germany Northern Ireland game because Northern Ireland gets a lead with a pretty nice shot. Uh, through Smith in the seventh minute, and I thought, ho, 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 maybe the Dutch will win the group because they at the same time were already ahead against Estonia um, through Van Alden. But you know, it comes as you would expect. The Germans did attack, they hit the post, and then Gnabry uh, gets the goal, makes it 1 1. Northern Ireland can fend them off, but just ahead of the half, Goretzka in the 43rd. Um, taps it more or less in, it goes in via the post and along the line in, makes it 2-1 for Germany at the half, and then Gnabry with his second 
in the 47th makes it three more it was time for me to switch i mostly i can tell you not only because it was interesting but i wanted to also see the new jersey i have to say that germany jersey in game doesn't actually look all that bad to be fair neither does the northern ireland jersey although i like the previous one better uh to finish up the match i didn't see the goals then gnabry gets his third goretzka gets his second and in stoppage time brandt at a sixth and gives Germany a 6-1 win and that's the thing with the Germans they score a lot of goals uh, that's something that we have to look out for yes they didn't look good at home against the Netherlands but in the games where they needed to win they usually did so um, emphatically so that's a plus for the Germans I switched then over to yeah let's watch the Dutch again uh, <laughs> They have, after all, one of my favorite teams. And yeah, Wijnaldo and Ake made it 2-0 in the 18th. Then, you know, many chances and, and, and so on. In the 66th, Wijnaldo makes it 3-0. Then uh, he adds a third, he gets a hat-trick in the 78th. I think it was a very weird one where he just took the ball away from a stolen defender and runs clear on goal. 4-0 and uh, Boadu in the 87th makes it 5-0. So... The Dutch cannot hold on, uh, cannot get the first uh, spot, thanks to Germany's win, but at least they get a win, as we'll see secure a spot in pot two. Pretty strong world qualification, although I have to say this not an island result was a little bit disappointing, and I have to say I wish they were uh, they had a baked by a better striking force. Let's go to group E. Uh, Slovakia gets the win that you would expect um, against Azerbaijan 2-0. Uh, uh, it took a while to break through, but in the 19th, uh, Bosnik gets it, and Hamšík in the 86 makes it 2-0 at a point where uh, that game actually didn't matter anymore. But at least Slovakia got the win to give the Hungry Wells game uh, some interest. What can I say about the Hungry Wells game? First of all, I really think that the Welsh uh, jerseys look quite nice uh, on the on the pitch the only thing that was weird is uh, that Gareth Bale he was the captain so he was hiding this pattern on the sleeves and then he seemingly because they needed to on the other sleeve also hide the pattern with a black tape uh, I have to see more on that but uh, yeah interesting to say the least uh, Wales was dominant from from beginning and very early got the uh, one nil uh, nice cross from uh, Bale and Ramsey in the fifteenth makes it one nil and uh, there were chances there. I mean Hungary was not in the game for the longest time huge amount of Hungarian fans in Wales uh, Cardiff but yeah uh, they were. Uh, uh, Bale and Ramsey on a very similar combination could have connected to a 2-0 but then Hungary did come up and actually had a glorious chance uh, late in the first half where uh, Hennessy twice saved well but I have to say Hungary needs to make the goal there uh, I felt that the shots were not well placed it was a little bit hurried uh, he saved twice on the line on the rebound you gotta make it 1-1 there if you want to have a chance and then Wales killed off the game early in the uh, second half after free kick uh, had a Moore and a Ramsey this gets lost there was a little bit uh, was he offside he was not offside if the Welsh player didn't touch it I think he didn't but uh, I couldn't really make it out Ramsey clear on goal slams it into the net 2-0 for Wales and Hungary never was coming. It was more that Wales could make a third, and so Wales deservedly gets this uh, second, last qualifying, direct qualifying spot. As I said all along, except my model, <laughs> the odds uh, did not agree with me, but I always said that Wales will make it out of that group. So Croatia, Wales, Slovakia finishes third, Hungary uh, fourth, and as Azerbaijan, Slovakia, and Hungary still have the playoff route. <laughs> Then let's go to Group G of oh, Austria. Uh, for, for first of all, the jersey disaster continues. The referee uh, insisted on playing in black, uh, in uh, light blue with black pads. So Austria had to take out the older away jerseys and actually looked good. Uh, but that was the only thing that looked good with them. Uh, Latvia, one of the worst teams in Europe at the moment, which to me itself is a little, little, little bit surprising. Uh, took full advantage that the Austrian team was playing with nine uh, changes from the previous game where they already weren't that great. 
Griginger, one of my favorite last players, made his uh, debut. Unfortunately, yeah, in in a, in a makeshift team, he also couldn't shine. Uh, Pervan, the former last goalie who is now at Wolfsburg, made his debut. And I remember uh, my focus was all on Wales and the Germany, but I remember look looking at it. Oh yeah, Austria is attacking, and then I realized no, this was actually Latvia. Unbelievable. Lat Latvia dom dominated the Austrian team most of the time. Austria had chances, but with Gregory in front, you never have. You, This guy can play forever and he will not make a goal. Uh, Latvia actually hit the bar. Um, then, yeah, a little bit late, late on, Austria had chances, but as I said, similar story. Austria was maybe a little bit dominant, but Latvia made the goal and Austria was never scoring. So uh, it didn't matter for anything. But it is a huge embarrassment to lose to Latvia away from home, even with a makeshift team. In the same group, Poland had actually quite some trouble with Slovenia. Uh, although Szymanski gets them an early, early goal, uh, Slovenia twice manages to equalize. And it's Goraski in the 81st that gives uh, Poland the winner over Slovenia. And then Israel loses to Northern Macedonia at home. Um, the goal by Nikolov uh, in stoppage time. Israel also for a team that actually thought that they might qualify after having a somewhat good, somewhat good start. No, it was not odd enough. So the group Poland, Austria 25 and 19, Northern Macedonia 14 as the Slovenia. So the former Yugoslav republics are there. And then Israel only with 11 points. Latvia gets a win. And we'll finish off in Group I where Belgium that's why I'm wearing them. They are the best team in qualifying, at least when we look at stats. Also perfect qualifying campaign. They were a goal down against Cyprus, but they score six um, to make it an easy win for them. Benteke uh, in the 16th, De Bruyne in the 35th and 41st, in the 44th, Carrasco, and then an on goal, and Benteke again make a 6-1 for Belgium. Uh, the new Belgium jerseys in-game don't look all that bad, have to say. So, uh, I actually think the Belgium Georgia jersey of the new Adidas jersey might actually be the best one, but let's see. Um, Scotland escapes a scare, uh, turn, turns around, they were 1 0 down to Kazakhstan, they win it 3 1 to kind of make up for their opening defeat a little bit, uh, but you know, it's took a while <laughs> to go there and then Russia beats San Marino 5-0 no other goal for San Marino fortunately that's uh, part of that I mean but yeah you know Russia makes good on their heavy loss to Belgium so Belgium perfect qualifying campaign Russia only loses twice to Belgium the, and then Scotland Cyprus Kazakhstan and San Marino and that ends uh, qualifying um, as for the playoffs, we have all qualified teams. In the playoffs, I will do a more detailed video on that. But we have in the League A playoff is Iceland for sure. In the League B playoff, we have the four League B teams that didn't qualify. Bosnia, uh, Slovakia, Ireland and Northern Ireland. In League C, we have the group winners Scotland, Norway, Serbia. And then League D playoff, Georgia, Belarus, Macedonia and the Kosovo. Now, what I got wrong, and I will talk about this, is that the four remaining slots are filled in by four League C teams. If Hungary would have qualified, it would have been a little bit more complicated, which is Bulgaria, Israel, Hungary, Romania, which will be drawn into the four empty slots, three in the League A playoffs and one in the League C playoffs. So I thought there might be actually a clear assignment according to the Nature League. No, they draw this one. So yeah. And then this has all kinds of impacts on the draw itself. Um, very quickly, just the pot. Uh, that we have, we have in pot one. Uh, pot one, we have uh, Belgium, Italy, Ukraine, uh, Germany, Spain, and um, England. Of course, sorry. In pot two, France, Poland, Switzerland, Croatia, Netherlands, and Russia. Pot three, Portugal, Turkey, Denmark, Austria, Sweden, and the Czechs. And in pot four, Wales and Finland, and the winners of the playoff path. But I'll do a separate video with the whole draw madness because it's really madness well let me know what you thought about the games over the last past two days uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and i'll talk to you soon bye hey there 
I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also consider subscribing to my channel to keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.